kitu chesa zala. Fana yetu. Hey, all protocols observed. Keeping in the bank and gazes on gate shallow sabo. Amen. We may be seated, saints. We may please open the book of Luke, chapter 23. Verse 34. Luke chapter 23, verse 34, in the New King James Version. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. Amen. Amen. In situation, the is not forgiving. What our Lord Jesus Christ is doing here, he is not forgiving. No, no, he's not forgiven. But what he's doing is he is offering forgiveness to the Father. Because this is a prayer, Bazalwan. Amen. Amen. So into essence of Tela Sinje, go to your Nauti, just to find out what he's doing. Because that's what he's doing. For you to offer something is something that you, you must offer something that you have. Let us therefore look as to what is it that he forgave for. Because Amen. If you if you for if you give or if you if you offer, this is an offering. Amen. You are offering something on now that you have. That you already have. Or, or have done. Amen. Amen. Uchesu, in the iPhone this side, Oguti. When, okay, see, so get things clear. Oguti, whenever Uchesu was teaching, was, whatsoever that he taught, it's automatically applied to him from the moment I found this. And the Lord says, uh, if ever. You, t- you, you teach the list of these commandments and you will be the least so because of that he was forced Amen. for him to do that which he had said Amen, Amen. Uh, so we'll look chapter 6 verse 37 with regards to what it teaches what it teaches we, 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 we see the Lord teaching his disciples to forgive in order for them to be forgiven. As he says forgive, what he's saying is that do this. Amen. Forgiveness is not something that you plan to do when you are in the cross. Meaning, you know, as you go to the cross. Amen. It is what you do. So, 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 Therefore, when we look at the life of Christ, he was forgiving. Amen. So, we have the duty as we go to the cross. Also as his church, we are out to forgive. Amen. Amen. So now it seems noble when you hear these words, Father, forgive them. Because it makes you be the one who is on the top. Because the Lord was in a pinnacle. On the cross. And looking down to those who were persecuting him. Saying to the Father, forgive them. He was a noble man. Letting go of a punishment. Letting go of a punishment. And that's the mistake we, we always make. We rush to be on the top. And not go back to see as to where can, where do I start for me to be at the top. Amen. Amen. Yes, it, even when it comes to, to general things like Imali. We want We want to have or possess money. But we do not look at how do you get money. That that that's it's it's the sweat. The work. Amen. Amen. So it's the same thing here. For the Lord to be able to forgive. He went through stages that asked him to forgive. What 
and, and indeed he did forgive. And now he's at a point of offering forgiveness. So, so we being his disciples, we cannot skip those steps and go and offer. Amen. Because the offering that goes to the Lord without ukshol and ukchekwa is an abomination. It's not acceptable. Same thing here with forgiveness. If we offer forgiveness to the Lord without checking ourselves whether we are in a position to forgive or receive forgiveness. It becomes an abomination. You find yourself being on the left side of the Lord where you do not receive forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Because because this is what God says. For you to be forgiven, you must forgive. Amen. Amen. It's up to you to choose if you want to be on the left or on the right. When you realize your mistake, when you realize your mistake, and say, Lord, then can you receive forgiveness from Amen. the Lord? Amen. Amen. So, the Lord teaches us forgiveness that it should come from the heart. It, it, it must not be a forgiveness that is a, a lip service. Just like when he quoted Isaiah 29, on Matthew 15, on Matthew 15 saying, these people come to me with their lips. They worship me in vain. Because, I'm paraphrasing because they, they, they left, the, but their hearts are far from me. He wants our hearts, not our sacrifice. For a sacrifice to be complete, it has to have a heart in it. Amen. Amen. Now, Tina, we have a, a responsibility as a bank. Yeah, I'm going to emphasize this one. We have to look and scrutinize ourselves. And our pillars, Bazalwan. And our pillars. Oh, no, Pilatu Betu. So our Pilate is the word of God. Oh, Pilatu Betu is the Gankunukun. The one that will scrutinize us, that will check us and be able to proclaim us this one is blameless. Oh, we learn in this story society, who is the Lona is the Kinsegu Sutin Pella, Lo Hambing in Akana. Only then can we be able to stand on the cross and say, Father, forgive them. Ila Pella gets in Gama is Papa Nin City Baba Batele. Joseph is a good example of this. In the Old Testament. Testament. When he offered forgiveness for his brothers, when they came to him, the one thing was Caesar. Befuna Caesar or needing help. Amen. He did not reject them, but he accepted them. Amen. Amen. When they did not know him, he was he, or he had already accepted them. When he revealed himself to them, he had already forgiven them. Even to the point whereby they, they thought he's surely gonna kill us when their father died. He was found guiltless. For he has forgiven them. So it now responsibility. We have to go back. And look at ourselves. And find out what in our offenses. In, 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 in those areas where we are pointing that bloody finger of ours, that finger with blood. And, and saying, he is the one who did me wrong. She is the one who did me wrong. We must go, we must go back to Pilate, the word. From Pilate, then can we be able to see what he, 
Are we to offer forgiveness or not? Because that's when we know through the word of God if we are blameless or not. Then can we offer forgiveness? Amen. Amen. In the tale of found the mouth of Saint Abel, we found the end of to the cross. We do not learn to master forgiveness. How was the book found to put it to the tale of At the apex, la pana engu pain. But you have to pick it up. A strong win. Little nuggets, bit by bit. You remember, you, 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 sometimes you, you are taught forgiveness for five days. For five days, for five days, your heart will be trembling. You will not be able to speak or even look at them. Not even going to eat, be able to eat with them. You see, okay, now it's getting better. Okay, I'm not taking that long anymore. And then from three days, it becomes a super lot. From three days, from three days, from three hours, up until you come like to a point gonna when move. they try to offend you, nothing is get stuck. Robo, you're getting higher and higher on you. 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 you, are choosing to be perfected. Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 26. Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 26. When he speaks about his calling, he says to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan and God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith. Missionary duty. When a crewman goes seven, when a crewman gets conduct, yeah. When a crewman gets the lion's part and die, Uguze. A demonstration of also Jesus. With that which was demonstrated by the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all children of God. We have to. We we have to allow for our eyes to be opened. The eyes of the blind. Those that are oppressed by the enemy. Remember what Jesus Christ said. Give them. For they do not know. Who do not know. Ignorance. Not knowing is darkness. Darkness is the kingdom. And that kingdom has a king. And that king is Satan. So those that hurt us are being used by Satan. But we cannot stay because we are offended. We are opening them to the light and the kingdom of God. And we say wars away. This is how things are done. We we forgive, we love, we pray for each other. We forgive. Was come a canyon. Come to the light. Was come a canyon. To the light. Was a come to the light. Come, come to the light. Because our kingdom is the kingdom of light. May we give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord of glory a hand of praise, Jesus. Hallelujah. Acknowledging all seats in the house according to their ranks, I'd like to greet the holy convocation of God. Luke 23, 43. And Jesus has said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. Now, these are the words of the Lord. And he's hanging on the cross. If we are to understand his situation, he's not only suffering from asphyxiation, Breath. 
but he's also suffering from exsanguination which is the loss of blood kodwa futhi intandlula kuyo ukuthula hlekelwa igazi so if you were to to if you have experienced either one of these things uma so wadlula lezi zinto ezibili nomenye yazo you would understand that speaking is the last thing on your mind. I'm sure the prophets can attest to the asphyxiation part. You don't want to speak because you are caught up in what's happening. But we find the Lord speaking these precious words. Who is he speaking them to? He's speaking to a criminal on the cross. Jesus is not alone on the cross. He has two other criminals on the cross. What is a criminal? A criminal is a guilty person. A criminal is someone who breaks the law. An example would be someone who drives over the speed limit. If we were to bring it home, because when we think of criminals, we think of somebody killing another person. So maybe if you think about breaking the law, you might just consider yourself a criminal too. Criminals are usually people with narcissistic behavior. They have a self-centered mind. They never think about the consequences. But now if you look at these two criminals on the cross, they are suffering the consequences of their actions. And they have two perspectives as they are on the cross. One is sorry for being caught. They are sorry that they are caught. So they are not guilty of the, uh, because of the act that they did. But they are just sad that they actually got caught. They didn't have an intention of stopping what they were doing. They are forced by the fact that they got caught. And the other criminal is actually sorry for his act. You see, when I say the cross for them is not a trial, it's not a test, it's not a training. As most people, when they're going through, usually categorize things. Nobody ever wants to own up to the fact that they are where they are because of what they did. But these criminals are on the cross because of their actions. Now their consequences have put them in the best position of their lives to experience their first and last chance at grace. Let's look at how they handle this time. If you look at verse 39 of the very same chapter, don't worry about it, I'll paraphrase. In this verse, uh, the Bible is telling us that the other criminal on the cross, please pay uh, careful attention to the word that the, the Bible uses. It says he blasphemed saying, if you are the Christ. Save yourself and us. This order tell you that you ought to be careful what you say when you go through a situation. Because that might look like a harmless statement. But we will look at it as we go on. If we look at the word blaspheme, it speaks of speaking of disapproval or you lower someone in estimation or importance. So we will, we will see that 
These words that this criminal is saying, these are not new words. These are words that have been spoken before. But now he is speaking them to serve himself because he wants to escape the consequences of his actions. You see, if there's another person in the Bible who knows exactly what consequence is, it's King David. David. When he lasted after Bathsheba and killed Uriah, he may have thought he got away with murder and adultery. But God came and confronted him because of his actions. Now the Bible tells us that David did repent. But because the principle remains, for every action, there is a reaction. After his adultery and murder, his house was never the same again. The son who's the product of adultery died. His son Amnon raped Tamar, his daughter. Absalom, his son, rose up against him to take the throne. And those are the consequences of his actions. This ought to warn us who we'll carry on with sin because we feel we, we have the chance to repent and not understand that our sin opens a gateway for a consequence that will make us uncomfortable. Now the other criminal on the cross, he, he rebukes the other criminal. And he says, don't you fear God because you and I are here justly. We deserve being here. But this man is innocent. And then he turns to the Lord and he says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. What is this criminal doing? He's expressing a contrite heart. It's a humble heart. It's a remorseful heart. Now a contrite heart is God's weakness. Now, weakness, we explain what, we, what weakness we are talking about. You see, if the senior apostle were to be standing here and shouting at us because we didn't want to change, I know that's an outlandish example. But if the senior apostle was shouting at us for not wanting to change, and a toddler ran up to him and grabbed his leg, and hugged his leg, he would not kick the toddler. He would kick the toddler and kiss it and probably change his toe. Because the toddler became his weakness. Now that is what a contrite heart is to God. The Bible says that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. So what this criminal was doing on the cross, he was offering a sacrifice to God. Now if you look at these two hearts on the cross, one is found used by the devil. One is found used by God. Because you remember we said that the words that the first criminal says are not new. We've heard them before in Luke 4 verse 3. Where the devil tempts Christ and he says, If you are the son of God. Now this criminal comes and says, If you are the Christ. He's not speaking his words. But he's speaking the words of the person who has come into him. Just like the Holy Spirit uses a body to speak to another person, the devil also jumps around in bodies that are open to speak well. We see him also in Peter. 
speaking discouraging the Lord from what he's about to do we see him entering Judas and the Bible said that it was because he waited for an opportune time so he catches the Lord at a desperate time and he comes with the very first temptation that he came at the first temptation we hear the Lord responding at the second we hear the Lord responding at the third we hear the Lord responding but there comes a time when you gotta ignore the devil so when the criminal speaks on the cross we don't hear the Lord answering nothing because sometimes you gotta let the devil in order to carry on with what you have to do now why does God say to the other criminals Today, I will, be, I will be with you in paradise. paradise. It is because this criminal allowed for God to use him on the cross. Because when the Lord was on the cross, he was in pain. He was, he was suffering. But the, cr the criminal with his words was able to remind the Lord of the result of the cross. Because when he was on the cross, that was his transit into his kingdom. So when the criminal says, Lord, remember when you, remember me, when you enter into your kingdom, he's reminding him that you got to finish this thing. Get to the completion of this. Other people are shouting negative things. But he, because of his heart, was used as encouragement by the Lord. And the Lord was moved. And he says, listen, I'm not going to promise you for tomorrow. But I'm going to promise you that today, I will be with you, you in paradise. paradise. He gave him the eternal promise. On the cross. What vessel will you be? Will you be used as encouragement? What will you speak in your situation? Will you tell God to prove himself? Or will you, despite of your situation, tell him who he is? Because this criminal says, Lord, he says, He to whom all things belong. Remember me. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a better hand of applause. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Hey. To the God who's able to change. The end is paid. Remember, Kumbon, a criminal is selfless. Had to be caught first. Umeleskales manj, a criminal is selfless. Had to be tried. Umelesinge nekalen si show. A criminal. Had to be found guilty. The admission of guilt or the declaration of guilt goes with the gavel of the judge. That sound of that gavel seals the fate. But this criminal, at the end of his role, met God, who says, I am the beginning, and I am the end. I am the Alpha, and I am the Omega. Omega. When people say things have ended, when they say they are guilty, when they say we are cutting you out of society, Or yesterday, no, my soul. Because you must understand no, 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 no. the peculiar characteristic is me, the sugi, the skankulunku of the term today. Tomorrow, Sasa is limited to the day I'm going to. 
Yesterday, is limited to the day that was before. Today. Today. I'm going to repeat this. Okay. The, the name today, or the word today, is cut, is limited. No by the next day for it to be proved to be true. And the word yesterday or the day yesterday is limited by time and the fact for, you, for, for the fact for you to go back. But the name that's, that is today is not limited by time. When you speak, just like the Lord name. says at the cross, yes, today, what in I shall remember in paradise. A paradise. And it is being opened today. And the Lord is saying, I will remember you in paradise. The Lord is in the says, I will remember. Limitless God. Powerful God. When they say it is ended, it is today is a new day. I know that today was your dying day. Today is your resurrection day. I know you've been called names. I know you've been misunderstood. Listen, I know you are guilty. You are guilty. You are guilty, I know. But it does not limit my power. No, my grace. No, my Today. The day is today. Until you will hear. No, What's the call? Come, Mr. Koma. Let us honor the Lord for his vessel. Let us honor the Lord for his vessel. Amen. Uh, Greeting uh, the apostle. Uh, our father, Pastor Svea. And the rest of the pastoral team. And the uh, entire church is large. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, today, by the help of true Holy Spirit, I'm uh, presenting the third word that is found in the book of John. Chapter number 19 from verse 26 to verse 27. John chapter 19, verse 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Amen. Amen. So for us to be able to glean what Holy Spirit wants us to glean from these verses, from these verses, we need to be able to understand that why did the Lord Jesus give these commands and what led him to, uh, or what event led him to be able to, to even give off these commands. First of all, um, for us to be able to know why um, the Lord Jesus gave these commands. We need to, know who, to whom did he speak these commands to? The first one when he says, Woman, behold thy mother. He says, Woman, behold thy son. He was speaking to Mary. Speaking about John. Uh, for us also to be able to understand why did the Lord Jesus uh, speak these commands, we need also to zoom in into the life of John so that we be able to see uh, the event that's caused the Lord Jesus Christ to, uh, to be even, to, to even, even 
speak these commands. Okay, who was John? Okay, first of all, um, before we even go to John, let us also see what was going on, what was taking place um, as the Lord Jesus was saying these commands. Um, the Lord Jesus was on the cross, drinking from the cup, as yes, the Father gave him, as his prayer in Gethsemane. He was being ridiculed, persecuted, rejected to the point of death according and also for the will of God. Amen. Amen. So for us to be able also, as we alluded earlier on, uh, to see why the Lord Jesus spoke these commands, let us zoom into the life of John. Um, one thing of what was interesting when I looked into the life of John, I found that John was a person who was inclined to high positions. He was a man who loved uh, positions, uh, exaltation by men. This we see because um, when he was called by the Lord Jesus, he was sitting with his father in his boat. Who is the father? Who is the father? The father is the highest authority in the family structure. Not only that, and we see him having connections with the high priest. In the book of John, who is the high priest? The high priest is the highest authority in the religious sect. Not only that, but we see the way he the way he positioned himself in the last supper. Sitting next to the Lord Jesus. Who, who is the Lord Jesus there again in that uh, context? He is, was indeed the highest authority among the disciples. Not only this, for the, the last one, we see him rebuking the person who was casting out the devil in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because he said that he does not follow us. Meaning what? If, if anyone cast out the, uh, the devil in the name of the Lord Jesus, meaning that he will no longer be exclusive. Because everyone is doing it. So that's why, so that's he rebuked him. Now having this understanding, this man is an object of influence. This man is an object of influence. We are influenced. Hence the scripture. Hence the scripture says, Proverbs chapter number 22, verse number 6. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in a way that he should go. So that when he's old, he will not depart from it. Meaning what? Then a child comes and empty slate. That's one needs to write on it. So that you may see a certain character in a child when he's old. So we see John being old. Portraying a certain character of loving high positions. So the question is, where did he take this character from? So if we go to Matthew chapter number 20, from verse number 23 to verse 23, from verse 22 verse 23, because of time, one read. Um, we see the mother of John bringing, bringing John into to to the Lord Jesus and asking the Lord Jesus that he may give. Uh, John to sit on the left, one to sit on the left, and sit on the right. In his, in his kingdom, meaning he was asking for position, high positions for his sons to the Lord Jesus. Hence, we see the character of his of the, or the doctrine that. The mother of John holds. Being portrayed in the character of John. Which proves. Proverbs 22 verse 6. And also let us zoom also. Into the life of Jesus. Who was on the cross. Drinking from the pizza cup. That the father gives. Understanding that the Lord Jesus. Is Theos Anthropos. 
meaning he's God man. By virtue of him being man, it means that he was a child. And by virtue of him being a child, it made him to be eligible to be trained. Hence, we find Isaiah 9.6 says, unto us a child is born. Hence, by, by virtue of him becoming a child, he was not exempted. Uh, yes, for him to be, he was not exempted uh, for him to be become trained by certain individual. And we see Mary as his mother being, uh, being chosen by the Lord to train the Lord Jesus as being man. That is why we see Jesus on the cross man Jesus on the cross portraying the doctrine that Mary holds because the Lord Jesus was being ridiculed being shamed persecuted rejected to the point of death according and for the will of God this we saw in the life of Mary when she was handpicked by the Lord Jesus to uh, to to be uh, to conceive of the Holy Spirit. That even so, Mary was, re- was persecuted, was rejected, was called as a fornicator for and according to the will of God to the point of death, which is social death. Because this is the same character being portrayed by the Lord Jesus. Meaning this is the doctrine that his mother poured on him. This we also see. This when the Lord Jesus in, in Getemane, Getemane and the cup was being given to him by the Father. He spoke the words which were, which were uh, in essence the same as the words that Mary spoke when the cup by, our, by the Heavenly Father was given when the angel spoke to her she said let it be unto me according to your word as the Lord Jesus spoke in in Ketema, Ketema, and said what? not my will I am but let your will be done which is the same doctrine that Mary holds that you see the life of Jesus. Jesus now the Lord Jesus on the cross is speaking to John saying John you said when your mother came to me you said you are able to drink of this cup that I'm drinking on the cross you said you are able to drink of this cup that I'm drinking on the cross you said you are able to drink of this cup but the issue here, John, is that the doctrine that you hold, the doctrine of high position, of love titles, can never enable you to cause you to drink from this cup because the doctrine that your mother taught can never strengthen your heart and your mind to cause you to suffer according, for the, according to the will of God. But this is the, the, the doctrine that Mary held to prioritize the will of God above everything. Even his, even her, her um, luxury, even her luxury in life. So hence there was a need for a change of mother for John to be able to drink of the cup that the Lord Jesus is drinking from. Hence we see the Lord Jesus on the cross saying to John, 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 behold your mother. Because this mother holds the doctrine that will enable you to drink of the cup that his father is now we see John. And we see two mothers. Being, being given to John. One according to the flesh. That is his biological mother. And one according to the spirit. That is, that is Mary. And we see the one that is, that is according to the flesh. Having doctrine. That can never enable the heart of the mother. And John suffering. But we see the mother. According to the spirit. Who represents the word of God, having the doctrine that is able to strengthen the heart and the mind 
That's why they may be able to enjoy through tribulation. Because this doctrine that very has shift the eyes from temporal joy to the eternal age to the eternal joy. What is in Hebrews chapter 12 verse number 2? That who for the joy that was set for the Lord Jesus he enjoyed the cross despite the shame so this is the doctrine that's the word gives in our hearts and our minds to be able to, to, to focus on the eternal joy through the doctrine that this word of God gives so even as John received Mary to her even so true Holy Spirit to receive this engrafted word of God that is to save our soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Savior. I pray that we move beyond the excitement. And the thanksgiving. And you move to absorption. Because this word needs absorption. No music, no sound. No music, no sound. Absorb. Momata. The truth. Ikiniso. Allow him to deconstruct. Your old mind. And your manner of thinking. Allow him to realign. Allow him to sever. To cut off the umbilical cords that ties you to your flesh. Which metaphorically speaks to your sinful nature. And then allow him to engraft you. And allow you, let your belly, that your belly, might be engrafted with the womb of the Spirit through the Holy Spirit that you might change your reasoning and your perception that there may be elevation in your mind and your perception that there may be a reordering of your priorities so that the things that are true, that are doctrinal, that are correct that the things that are everlasting, that are good, that are true may be given the correct order in which you will happen in your life so that you may may be found within the will of the Father and that you might live as you appeal absorb mom mumata
the leadership of the church, the entire brethren. In the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are going to open the book of Mark. So chapter 15. Chapter 15. Verses 33 to 35. Mark chapter 15, verse 33. Now when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood by when they heard that said, look, he's calling for Elijah. Amen. Amen. Before we go any further, I want us to define the word forsake. It means to be deserted. To quit. To disown. To neglect. The word is commonly used when somebody who knows you better disowns you. A stranger cannot forsake you. Amen. The word of God says in verse 33, it was between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock. There was darkness in the entire land. Darkness is always associated with God's judgment. When God judged the pre-Adamite world, Genesis 1, 2, the earth was without form and it was void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. However, it is amazing that the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the water. Wait a moment. Judgment. Darkness. But the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the waters. He did not forsake the world. His Spirit was still hovering over the face of the waters. Another judgment that I want to touch base on was when God judged Egypt through the ninth plague. There was darkness. In fact, there was thick darkness when you, when you read Exodus 10 verses 21 to 23. There was thick darkness over the land of Egypt for three days. But verse 23 but all the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. Were they not in Egypt? Why the exception? Let us go further. It was three o'clock in the afternoon when Jesus cried out with a loud voice which was a big sound. My question that I ask is, why did Jesus cry out with a loud voice? Was it because of distress? Was it because of pain? As he was hanging on the cross, suffering excruciate Appreciating pain and public shame. As he was hanging on the cross, he had difficulty in breathing, which could only be alleviated by him taking off or pushing 
up with one feet. No matter look how old I was, I'm still just a rasu pepper. My work me la para misse im lenze ya kuno mi nyaya ozaki. And take the weight. Ebe se tati sindo som zimba. Of the arms. No is sindo se ingalo. But. Kodwa. This will cause severe pain. Loko utalu shumo kuhu. On his arms. On his legs, on his back, and will force him to drop down again. Because he was unable to breathe. And eventually, he ended up dying due to suffocation and physical trauma that happened on his body. Why am I asking? explaining this. Can you cry out with a loud voice? Suffering such pains. But Jesus cried out with a loud voice. That statement only does not make me to just breathe easily and read through the word. It makes me sit under and ask questions. Why did Jesus cry out with a loud voice? What did he say? What did he say? What? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. This is the most ununderstood word of Jesus Christ in the cross. Lama zuge, ama zuga jesu anga kondagali gashi. There is a lot of controversy around this way. Kuningu pigi sana maelana na lama kama. Some ask what language was Jesus speaking. Aba nyeba buzu guti ilupu limu jesa il kuluma. Some say it was ancient Hebrew. Aba nyeba beti is heperu sakdala. Some say it was Syriac. Which is an Eastern Aramic language. Which was spoken by Christians at that time. That makes me to because there were no Christians before Jesus made disciples. And some say it was just ancient Aramic. But to me, what, mean, what is the most significant thing is that God in his manifold wisdom when he wrote this particular verse he decided that you can translate anything else but I want you to keep this one as is we all know that the New Testament was mostly written in Greek and then it will be translated to Zulu, English, Afrikaans, Afrikaans. But when you go to any other Bible, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Before you get the language, that makes me ponder. As even some of the people who were near the cross did not understand Jesus. Hence, we found some thinking that he was saying, Elijah, Elijah, but was he calling Elijah? Definitely not. Ha. He was not calling Elijah. But what did he say? My God, my God, why have you? Why have you forsaken me? We are not going to explain further what forsaken me. I am aware of the literal understanding of this verse. That most people, they tend to understand that Jesus, as he spoke this word, it was because he was suffering the pain of being separated with the Father. 
I don't want to argue that. But I want to dig further than that. God who coexisted as God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can he forsake himself? We are married. We are married, it's not my choice. In case somebody did not know. But my choice. Can you forsake me? Okay. He does not have the guards to forsake me. Let me forsake him. Because I am from the Mzuli household. I am tired of you. I don't want anything to do with you. I'm neglecting your kids. I'm neglecting your house. And everything that you thought we own. I'm taking my way back home. I was able to do that. But my children are not God. I'm talking about God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can he neglect himself? But neglect yourself. Even if, if I want to neglect myself, I cannot do this. I love myself too much. The only person who neglects himself or herself is the one who decides to hang himself, to shoot himself, to die on his or her own hands. I am not capable of doing that. He is not capable. There are verses which saints would quote to say God does not listen to sin. Like sin. But let us look at Adam. He sinned. He's the father of all sins. Did God forsake him? But he, he did not. He devised means. According to 2 Samuel 14, 14, 14, 14. So that the one who has been cast out be restored. God did not abandon Adam. Instead, he had to clothe him so that he may cover his because shame because he loved human race too much. I want us to just go past one of these verses which is Isaiah 59 verse 2, 59 verse two which talks about the sin that separates us from God. Isaiah 59 verse 2 this is God. This is sin. This is mankind. When the Bible says sin separates us from God, God is still here. But my sin becomes the wall that separates me from God. That prevents the, the main race to have intimate relationship with God because there is sin. As soon as you confess your sin and you repent, the sin no longer has a place. They begin to experience an intimate relationship because God did not forsake him but he stood until he repented. Jesus, Jesus knew perfectly well why the assignment that he took upon his shoulders. He was not confused. 
Because if we say Goba Uma City, he did not say he did not know Wayengas. that he was going to undergo Ugutuzoshula such a pain. Uzoshula and Shugwine and Gag be missing a mark. Gabeke Siasugem Gomen. In ancient times, a Katine Zule, the canon of scripture, a um, is Kalo says we was not structured. Sasunga Missiwe, the way it is today. Gensela is missing her in Amsan. One cannot say. Let us open the book of Mark 15. Verse 33 to 35. Verse 33 to 35. Or maybe it's a bad example. New Testament. No one would say. Let us open Psalms. 22 verse 1. 22 verse 1. But instead, the person will say, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Trying to tell people, come with me. Let us read this scripture together. Just like in our church, TFBC. TFBC. When the pastor is about to say the protocol prayer, he will say, in the name. Nobody will ask the other, but we will all join with him and say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's exactly what Jesus was saying. He was saying, understand the word. Understand the scripture that you've been teaching. There were Pharisees here. There were Pharisees here. The scribes. The people who knew the law. Who taught the law. And they seemed not to understand. No wonder why Jesus had to cry with a loud voice. To say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because I do not think he was saying that to God. Because God can hear the thoughts of our mind, the meditation of our hearts. He did not see Jesus to speak out loud, to cry out loud. But the Israelites who had forgotten about Psalms chapter 22. Jesus had to invite us to say, This is not a mistake. As I am standing here, I am fulfilling prophecy. It was prophesied many years ago that there will Take my garment as you go through the whole Psalms of chapter 22. You find the whole experience that Jesus suffered. That makes one wonder and say, Lord God, you loved the human race so much that you did not want to die without the people of Israel knowing that you are fulfilling scripture. That this is prophecy fulfilled. Hallelujah. Now, I am looking at Jesus hanging on the cross. We know that Jesus is the word. He is the word of God. We find the word speaking words. It is. We find the word speaking the words. In his most severe pain. Saying, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Hallelujah. Now, when you look at Jesus, Jesus. as he was dying, still having energy, to speak out loud so that the scribes and the Pharisees could hear what Jesus was saying. I am asking myself, why did Jesus speak loud? 
because they did not hear him they had forgotten the scripture they did not know what they taught they thought the, law, the word of God was just theory forgetting that it had to be fulfilled another way I am saying another way that I am saying as Jesus was crying so loud saying Eloi Eloi lama sabatan wanting them to hear and wanting them to see wanting them to be familiar with the scripture I am asking if were they using what we call selective listening because as saints we sometimes pick and choose the word of God that which we want to hear and that which we do not want to hear we just forsake it was that what they were doing hence Jesus had to speak out loud to draw their attention to the scripture that they were teaching people. It might happen so. I think for me, that is the main reason why Jesus had to speak loud. Speaking to the Father and speaking to the people of Israel. Now, manje as we enjoy this Passover, I want us to look at our lives and search the word of God that which we want to build us in its entirety, not to select or choose whatever that pleases us. In that way, we shall be built in the word of God. In that way, Jesus will find his bride without spots and wrinkles. Because when we select the word of God, we are going to miss something very special that the Lord has for us. May the Lord bless you all. Hallelujah. Give the King of glory honor and bless his name. Wow. As she's ministering, She's proving the divinity of our God. That God cannot forsake himself. And therefore disproves the assertion that it was the son speaking to the father. Because Athanasius' creed says that the father is almighty the Son Almighty, mm. the Holy Spirit Almighty, mm. and yet there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. The Father God is, and the Son God is, and the Holy Spirit God is. And therefore we do not have three but one. We may have the three persons that may be distinguishable. But indeed, they are indivisible. And therefore, when Christ is crying out, Eloi, 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 he's not speaking to the Father because him and the Father are one. But he is mimicking. He is replaying a film 
that already was. Because Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 says those whose names are not found in the Lamb's book of life who are slain before the earth was ever laid in its foundation. And Hebrews chapter 10 says behold the whole volume of the book is speaking of me. So it's Psalm 22. It says my father and my father it's a, re it's a ration of the scroll so that those who were crucifying him those who were carrying the scroll may realize that everything that was taking place was taking place according to script we cannot be in the vicinity where God is and have access to what the word of God says and yet miss him when he moves let us honor the word of God and bless him